count your blessings. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. We are in the month of November, November 2020. We just came out of a week of elections. That's right. Can you believe it? A whole week of elections and we're still not done. So you may be saying, count your blessings. What in the world? What blessings do I have to count? Well, I'm going to get to that. But before I get to that, let me share a story about another election. This election occurred over 3,000 years ago. That's right, over 3,000 years ago. This election occurred in Mizpah, near Jerusalem. And this election can be read about in 1 Samuel, starting around chapter 8. But I'm going to give you the Cliff Note version. So, in this election, we had two candidates running for the highest office in the land, much like last week. Two candidates that desired to govern the people, to lead the people, to reign over the people. Two candidates that wanted to be in the highest office of the land. The one candidate, the one candidate was the very best, the absolute best candidate for the position. The other candidate, well, not so good, not the best. Nevertheless, the people wanted to vote. The people wanted their voices to be heard. So the votes were cast, the elect elections were done. Now, the number one candidate was, you guessed it, the King of Kings, the Lord of all Lords, the highest ruler, God Almighty himself the best candidate, God Almighty himself. The second candidate, the second candidate was a mere earthly king, a mere man. His name was Saul. He was Saul, the son of Kish. He was tall, he was handsome, and the people loved him. So it was on, the vote was on. They had to decide which candidate they would choose. Now I already hear you saying, that's not even anything you got to worry about. Obviously, we're going to take king of all kings. And that's what the people were expected to do. But the votes were cast. People had a chance to vote. The people wanted to be heard. They cast their votes. And we had another, one more character that was in on this, Samuel. Samuel was a prophet, priest, and judge at that time. But in this particular story, he was like the campaign manager. And so the campaign manager managing the campaign says to the people, listen, study the candidates well. Make sure you know the vote you are casting. Make sure you remember how you got to the place you are in today. Make sure you remember who has led you thus far. Study, do your homework, but the people wouldn't listen. The people figured they already knew who to vote for. And what they said to Samuel is, hey, we want an earthly king. We want a king who will rule us and lead us in battle, just like all the other nations around us. We want a candidate that leads us like everybody else. We want to be like everybody else. And so Samuel didn't want to really want to hear this. He went back and he shared it with God. And God told him, give the people what they want. So now Samuel has to give his concession speech. And in his concession speech, he tells the people, listen, you have chosen to have this person as your candidate, as the person to lead the country, to lead the nations. You have chosen to be like everybody else around you. But this is what God says. God says, I will never abandon you. I will never dishonor my name. I will always desire to have you to be my very own people. And so, as, as I said, the votes were cast, God lost, Saul won, Saul became the, the person to sit in the highest office of the land. Now, you're probably saying, okay, that, that's, that's, that's cool, but where, where's the blessing? You said count your blessing, where is the blessing? I'm glad you asked. And here it is, here it is. 
that election, even though it was over 3,000 years ago, that election is still ongoing. Just like the one last week, it is still ongoing. But here's the difference. You can cast your vote today. You can make a decision for the best, absolute best candidate in the land, God Almighty himself, or you can vote for a mere earthly king. The decision is yours. But just like Samuel said, I urge you to study the candidates. Study and figure out who is the best candidate to sit in the highest office in the land. Now that office is the office of your heart. Who will sit in the highest office, the office of your heart? You get to vote. You don't have to wait until you're 18 years old. That's a blessing, that's good news. You can vote right now. You can make that decision right now. Choose God or mere king. Now you may be saying, okay, a mere king, what are you talking about? Well, here's the deal. You can cast your vote for the king of popularity. You can vote for the king of beauty. You can vote for the king of the beastly body. You can vote to compromise your values on social media to get likes. You can vote to compromise your values to get people to be attracted to you, to get people to love you. You can compromise yourself uh, by infatuation. You can compromise yourself for fashion. You can compromise yourself for shoes, for the party life, for the game you like. You can vote to be like everybody else around you, or you can vote to have God lead over your life. The election is still ongoing, and you have an opportunity to vote in the election. I would urge you to check your ballots. The, the Israelites probably figured they were making the right decision. They were making the right choice. They were voting for someone maybe that they could see. Maybe they were looking at everything around them and they decided this is, this is what we need, this is what we want. And sometimes we do that as well. We look at the things around us rather than the God within us and we make the wrong vote. We, we look at the ballot, we look at what's on the ballot, we look at what the candidates represent, what they stand for, we, we look at all of that, and then we cast our vote. I just urge you today to be careful. Be careful, check your ballot, check your heart before you check that box, and before you slide your ballot into that slot machine. Check and make sure you have voted for the right candidate. Sometimes we think we're doing what's right. Sometimes we think we're making the right decision. Sometimes we say, oh yeah, I know God, God is in my heart, but we're not allowing him to reign. We haven't really voted for him. So I hope today, I hope today in the ongoing election, election of who will reign over the highest office in the land, I pray that you will cast your vote, unlike the Israelites, I pray you will cast your vote for the King of all kings, for the Lord of all lords, for God Almighty himself to rule and reign in the highest office of the land, your heart. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you. We are in the election season, but God, your promises are still just as true as they were 3,000 years ago. You will never abandon us. You will never dishonor your name. You will always desire to be the God of us and to have us as your very own people. So I pray that every young person will take a look at the ballot, take a look at their heart, and that every person will vote for the best candidate, will vote for you to rule and reign over their lives. And I pray God and thank you for your patience during this election. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.